What up, what up? Welcome to Spyro Metro Books. I am here today with some friends of mine. We're uh, going to be going over the uh, final book in The Lost Fleet Beyond the Frontier by Jack Campbell. It's the book Leviathan. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, start off by introducing ourselves. You, uh, let's see here. Go like that. You want to go first there? Uh, yes. Let's, uh, Let's start with, um, hi, uh, my name is Ramsey, and um, let's say my channel might have kind of started this. I, I started reading it, and then Joe was like, hey, I'd love to read it with you, and then Carl jumped in, and then Carlos has jumped in on this series, and um, it's been a lot of fun. I uh, really enjoy it. Uh, the chat for, for it is held on my Discord Um and I've really noticed that a lot of people are interested in Lost Fleet lately. Um, my Lost Fleet Should You Read uh, video is doing really, really well, which I think um, is because the series is kind of kicking up some steam. And um, so I run the Rajathan YouTube channel. I didn't say that already. I don't feel like I did. but <clears throat> um, And I just talk about books, mostly sci-fi, um, fantasy thrown in quite a bit. Uh, and doing some presidential stuff, doing biographies, um, trying to learn who my country's presidents are. Um, not just the lore you get in school, but like actually everything about the presidents, which has been an interesting um, situation. And that's, that's it. Great, great, great stuff. Really, really fun, entertaining channel. Love your uh, YouTube videos there. And then uh, let's go with oh. Joe. I'm Joe from Unity One Five One. Um, I have a second channel, Unity One Five One Universe. I am I'm a sci-fi booktube channel, which I haven't done a booktube reviews for a long time. Um, but I do um, have like authors come on and they chat about their books. I do writing stuff on there occasionally about my own writing and stuff and just stuff. Basically, I do want to do some more reviews. I keep saying it every time I do one of these, but I'm so busy. I am the, the parent who stays at home, look after children, and I just don't have time. Period. Um, but my second channel, which is my story one, which I'm putting uh, my story videos on. Um, yeah, there's that one, which I'm a bit more active on because they're easier for me to do than sit down and do a review of a book. I have to think about stuff, write it down, record a script where I can just write a story and edit and send it on. That's easier. Um, that's that. That's me. Yeah, and you and you just uh, uh, just had a narrator. Uh, yeah, come on for the book, correct? Yes. No, I've got a really good deal. Um, like four thousand words, thirty eight pounds, which I think was about forty two dollars or something, which is a really really good deal. Um, so for the stories that I do, I'll get him to do that, and um, yeah, that's that's it. Hopefully, he's gonna. I've got to finish up one story. So I just finished over the weekend, but I've been so sick. Um, but he's just, I'm waiting. Once I finished it, he's going to do it. So hopefully by next weekend, I'll have that out. Um, I've got another video that I need to finish editing to get out, which again, I was supposed to get over the weekend, but I've just been dying. Um, but yeah, other than that, they're still doing stuff. You know, people like them, I think. <laughs> and like Carl, please, please introduce yourself, my friend. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Carl with the Geek on My Sleeve channel. Um, run that with my brother Pete. We do weekly uh, book streams, kind of similar to this one. Been having a blast going back and uh, rereading the Lost Fleet series. Uh, really hoping the gang is up to continuing on to, was it The Lost Stars is the next one in the series? It is. Um, been having a blast. Uh, rereading, getting to know these guys. Um, definitely recommend going and checking out their channels. Um, I'm still catching up on all the different author interviews that Joe has on there, which is pretty cool getting to talk to uh, a lot of the people in the space that we enjoy and love so much. And um, yeah, it's been a fun journey. Excited that uh, Carlos is able to host this one for us. I think there's a couple playlists that we have put together bouncing around between the channels for this read along and um yeah if we haven't shamelessly plugged it already uh discord is the best place to get a hold of these guys and keep chatting with them so yeah looking forward to getting into it 
Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, you guys just uh, surpassed episode 100 of that podcast, right? Yes, yes, we hit 100 live um, book discussions. So, um, it's yeah, it's been a fun journey. Learned a lot along the way, and uh, it's just an amazing little corner of the internet um, with all these guys just hanging out, talking about books. I think a lot of us have similar stories to where uh, people in our day-to-day lives aren't quite as obsessed with books as we are. So it's awesome to um, hang out with you guys and just share our passion for reading. Good stuff. Good stuff. And, and Ramsey, you, you guys are, what president are you guys on now? Um, in the middle of uh, John Quincy Adams doing a militant spirit. If you, I'm getting wow. a glare, but great stuff. Good somewhere stuff. in there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, first um, first son of a president that became president. Um, basically, his whole life he was groomed to be the next president. He he was um, an interesting guy. Cool. And then uh, and I just want to say uh, thank you to these guys here uh, for one allowing me to host you know the final episode of this series that I started off as you know a super active chat member and. And then, um, you know, kind of they pushed me into the booktube community in terms of actually starting the channel. So just getting started and uh, lots of more content to come in the future and uh, happy just to share that along with everybody here. Uh, yeah, you right. definitely didn't start the uh, the way everybody else starts. You, you went hour long uh, book <laughs> haul video. <laughs> Fences. But it was good, man. Cool. All right. Uh, does anybody want to uh, share like an introduction or a summary to kind of like quickly get us to where we are at the start of book five? There's only one man who does that. Uh, I was about to say Ramsey's so yeah. good at this. Yeah, there's one man. <laughs> All right. So we are at this point. Um, we had just got done with the war in mm. the first series. And we're coming through the syndics are still acting kind of weird, um, wanting to start the war up. We're realizing that the Alliance is also wanting to restart the war through the first couple books. We meet a bunch of different aliens. We have the dancers, we have the kicks um, and we have the enigmas, the enigmas we met sort of in the last series. Um, they're very secretive, most likely live underwater um, and really want us to know nothing about them. Uh, the kicks are herbivores, very pack mentality. Um, they look like teddy bears, um, call them bear cows. Uh, but then they eventually named them the kicks. Um, and then the dancers are, look like spider wolves. Um, the dancers, are the only alien race that's willing to team up with us and, and create an alliance. And at the end of the book, they said, Hey, we got to go something's happening at our home, please take us home. And then, um, come to find out they basically were trying to tell us that there was a problem or tell the Alliance mm. that there was a problem without telling that there was a problem. So they took the captain John Geary and some ships to midway, which is where the next series is going to be based in. Um, and then on their way back, they notice these dark ships destroying, um, the next closest star system that has allied with the Alliance. And then the um, next closest Syndic star system that um, was not a good star system. They were, they were trying to undermine us. Um, and so come to find out these ships are um, there. There was a software push to keep these ships from being seen. And then the ships were completely AI driven. So um, they had, gone against or they they had thought their programming said um destroy this entire planet basically um and so they started fighting we fought them all the way back into alliance space nobody could see anything as as they got back to alliance space yeah the sword, um, just they could see like the the battles they're like it looked like you were doing like a a practice thing but then your ships mm-hmm. were taking damage weren't it as well as they they designed or programmed like geary to think like geary Mm-hmm. And it, so he had to then do all that. Sorry, kind of just you know. Come, no, you're good. On, it, it's uh, mind. <laughs> they, and that that was something that was really hard for him because um, he actually had to lean on his wife uh, Tanya Disjani, um, 
And like we had that whole thing at the end of the book where it's like, go left. Okay, now go left again. Go left a third time. And he's like, I, I would never do that. And he's like, that's why you need to do it because that's mm -hmm. something you would never do. Um, so she was finding ways. I think she had, she's kind of like Batman. If you guys ever read that comic where Batman has like a plan on how to take down everybody in the Justice League. And mm -hmm. then he, uh, and then they take that and they use it against everybody in the Justice League. Um, that's kind of like what she felt like she was doing. She had a plan on how to take down Blackjack if she ever had to. Um, and then she was using her plan to take him down um, to, to defeat these AI driven ships. They have more firepower and they have better maneuverability um, because they don't have to worry about like scrambling human brains. Um, the, the next part, they come into Verandal, which is the home star system. And then um, nobody can see it. They're giving false orders. And then these two mysterious people um, who are not seen by the Marines armor, you know, mm. wearing helmets, um, all the software is supposed to not see, have them be seen. Um, and these people are like, well, you know, how are, Blackjack could see them and was told to stand down. And uh, he's like, I'm going to have my Marines arrest you. They're like, oh, they can't arrest somebody they can't see. And then they found out that he actually found the, um, the software updates and stuff. And um, the next part, I don't remember exactly. They go from the, 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 the dancers do like a big circle, don't they? To indicate where midway was. They did that last book. Yeah. Oh, no, um, I'm not well, then, yeah. well, they went, no, 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 but that's important. Yeah. Well, they went back to earth. Like if we're talking about the whole thing, they went to earth for a mm -hmm. while they met some other humans who were like just call it north of earth and everyone they did dealt with that they couldn't fight for nothing there's all like show yeah. yeah i feel like there's gonna be more to that like there could be some more Probably. baddies up there you know maybe i don't know um yeah they did that didn't they that, and then they come back and then that's when all the stuff happened they met the ships the dark ships all that happened mm -hmm. um I'm trying to remember. That's so bad. I know. I know they chase out of Verandal into another star system. I don't remember the name of that star system. Yeah. And they destroy all of the ships in that other secondary star. They have system. a couple fights, didn't they? Yeah. The and then, the then they figure out. Okay, so they circled this. The way the 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 what is it? Not the hypernet, but the other jump. What's that called? Jump space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. One's hypernet, um, and the other one, I believe, is jump. So they couldn't jump to a binary star system. Binary star systems are two suns that yes, you know, go around one another. Um, because it messes with the gravity wells. And on a regular star system, the gravity wells are solid. You know, when you go in, you're gonna hit the right one. Um and so because the gravity wells are so weird with binary star systems, because the stars keep moving, um, they couldn't jump to that star. So they thought the star was empty and abandoned, but the government had created a hypernet between yes. the two. And um, that's where all that was set up. So they're trying to find it. Unity then, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Unity all, yeah. 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 It was it was kind of like their boogeyman. They're like, oh, if you can't find something, it's a unity alternate, or if you can't do this or whatever. Right. Um and it was so, a it was a backup government uh yes, it was program it was like that was the, like rumored. What, what didn't the U.S. government have something like that where there was like underground bunkers where we could live for like 25 years or something like that? We do have that. That's where the uh, designated survivor still goes uh, yeah. during the Congress. Um, it's like, uh, what's it called? The State of the Union. It like I know it used to be in West Virginia because we were going to go. It, it was like at a big at a hotel, and uh, now you can go tour it because it became too popular. So they. Well, they make money off it. <laughs> yeah, they, they decommissioned it. Now you can go see it. I don't think we're that, supposed to talk about it. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> all, all of a sudden, this this, this stream is pulled down, and we're all yeah. Yeah. He just sort of he's like doosh, 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 Ramsey screen cuts off, and then like Carl goes, and then your car's like, I buy top not say nothing, and I'm like, what's going on? Like, it takes a few minutes to get over it. Um, so yeah, that, that's what Unity Alternate was set up as, and then they. Um, did the AI there, which in the, in the books, they it kind of been leading to this because when they were on Earth, they had a whole conversation about how AI, it, it follows directions to the letter. 
Um, you can hack it and mess it up, can't you? We've yeah, been they're... getting this foreshadowing since book one of the first series. Um, I think Rion even just was it Rion or somebody else like they were having the conversation about AIs or whatnot on the bridge, right? That's right. Yeah, and, yeah, the, and the book, dangers of it. Rion um, was asking why they don't have AI do certain things, and uh, Destrani was saying, "No, it's because it's unsafe because." You know, giving them power is is never mm -hmm. safe, never smart. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'm trying to remember, they find a way to pull them all out of Unity Alternate, except for like one or two of them. Right? No, that's not right. Before yeah. I was like, just before this, they 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 work out how to talk to the dancers properly, and then the dancers start mm -hmm. communicating them and not treating them like children because they learn how to yeah. send, sing, I... or like music stuff. They talk in patterns. Yeah. So they needed to either do poetry or singing to talk in a pattern. And it had been hard to communicate with the dancers before because they thought we were children um, because we were not talking in a pattern. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was... Uh, I did like... I, that little sidetrack was really cool. I liked that a bunch. It, it's fun and I really enjoyed it because a lot of times um, I find like sci-fi stories fall into the trap of Aliens are just like us, but with like different skins, right? And so, um, Jack Campbell, you know, like there, we plenty, plenty of things we could poke at, but he at least had these different aliens, aliens. like the different paradigms, mm. um, to where like we just not how we were brought up, right? Like we, we see the differences between humans just in different cultures, let alone complete species growing in different star systems um so yeah it was it was really fun to kind of see that and when it kind of clicked for them for the dancers to start engaging at a higher level with the humans and um before i forget first and foremost ramsey like amazing job on the summary there bro yeah um, a lot of a lot so of many material <laughs> yeah so many details that uh my brain just slips yeah so, uh, <laughs> spot on man other reason why to go check out uh that guy's channel right there as he breaks down all the goods eventually um, I'll, I'll get back into the podcast and keep doing uh book summaries because those yeah. those are fun to do but they take a lot of work they're a mm. lot of work a lot of work and all those notes and details down and, um and, yeah and like and the, the for like a basic summary for those who, that are just so happen to catch this as the youtube algorithms like here give the podcast on the final book first right because of whatever you searched or whatnot uh, right. basically you have a hero found after a heroic sacrifice made a legendary by their culture and government brought back and a hundred years later the world has changed and he's starting to go back up until eventually he leads um, the whole of the armada again against various enemies and uh, and eventually themselves i think is like a just real like and then an all all chaos ensues inside that <laughs> yes yes <clears throat> a, so a lot get, of um you... sorry go ahead i was gonna say do you guys want to wait on the ending and we'll talk about the first part and then we can kind yeah of the ending later yeah i got some questions here uh yeah. did you want to add something to the summary portion there carl no i was just um going to point out like a lot of um fun lessons throughout the series um, yeah just... well here we go we'll just that sounds like a great transition so what's the best moment for you you could share that in the the lessons uh so um gosh i i just sci-fi junkie sucker for aliens so I, I we talked about it a bit earlier but i really just enjoyed the interaction with the dancers um and the people in the crew who are willing to kind of like challenge their own beliefs and perspectives in regards to those things and um oh I'm trying to think of it uh what's the politician's name the the ground general that um charbon yeah yeah Charbonne, Charbonne. translator yeah um his journey was kind of a fun one because he was a ground general ground forces general thought about going into politics realized he didn't want to go into politics because of just the way 
um, everyone felt about the government. And then just kind of like towards the end of the book, um, you know, through the interaction with the dancers and everybody else is like, you know, um, we need good people to step up into leadership. Like we can't just keep complaining about this. Like we, if we want it to change, we, we need to get in there and change it. So, um, Geary sort of edges him in a bit, doesn't he? He's like, you know, we need good men in there. We need good people because, you know, mm -hmm. and some of the other politicians, some of them were just, you know, not nice, but some of them were decent to a degree. You know, they, they are what they are because that's how they've been brought up in that system. But some of them aren't actually completely terrible. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? And like, they're all betraying each other and backstabbing and keep, you know, everything's classified. And they're talking about not classifying stuff and they're like, ah, oh, classify it. It's just the standard go-to, isn't it? Right. Right. And for, for you, Joe, uh, what do you think the best moment was? <sighs> Out of all of the books, these these five, I did like Dauntless is like sort of one on six with them other humans in Earth. I did really like that. That was just a really good close encounter ship battle where everything was very distant and zooming past really quick. <laughs> With this book, um, without spoiling, I liked that a couple of people actually died because it added more weight to it. Where people don't die, and I don't like that because it kind of takes the the real, not realism, and you know what I mean. Yeah. It's like, oh, they're not going to die; they're all going to survive. It's kind of like, oh wow, they're stuck here. How are they going to survive? I don't know. I'm sure they will. You know, mm -hmm. that always that's just me personally, but yeah, that's just that. It, they didn't go all Game of Thrones on us, but um, no. it, it gets tiresome. It's like, oh, yeah. they won't kill these guys off or whatever. Yeah. Um, you always know so. Dauntless. Nothing's going to happen to Dauntless. Let's be realistic. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. just, and then, like, you know, when it's, uh, that's the only thing. Now, I know Sidetrack, but with a diff different book that I've been listening to, the Blood and Stars one, something happens to actually a ship called Dauntless as well. Something happens. It's like, oh, Dauntless isn't safe. You know? They they you know that, that old guy like stuff dies. That's why I'm really hooked on that as a side note. You, you should call watch it. It's, it's good. Yeah. Just gotcha. yeah. So I, I know we don't want to get into spoilers at the end, but I was kind of curious um with it being like the last book there and we talk about people dying. It, was it believable enough with that that climax there during the end? Um when we thought like everybody was in danger, am I going too far into spoilers or? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Nah, go for it. I, I, this is book five. Let's just I go worry about spoilers. If you're here, you're. You want to be spoiled? Because, yeah. yeah. So like it, it got pretty intense during the end, right? After we lost, you know, a handful of our comrades and everything. Um. Yeah. And there you go. Uh, but before before she died, like, it would. What was his name? He died. Um, to live. That's it. Yeah, because he went. I I kind of I was listening to the audio book. I sort of missed it. I was doing something, and then later on, like they talk about, oh, Tulev's dead. I'm like, hey, who, what, when? Like, I completely yeah, missed yeah. that part when I was listening to it. It's, it kind of was like a bit of a brush over. I felt it wasn't. It was just it, um a ship. The his ship name drop, and then I think Dijani yeah. said something briefly, and then we're in the heat of battle. Got to keep going, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Um, did and did then we lose all... Badaya too? I can't remember if we lost Badaya or not. Mm. No, I don't. I thought it was just two Lev and obviously Ron and husband. I think. Mm -hmm. Paul, yeah. Yeah, I think I think My that's man. right. Yeah. We'd so, be too lucky if we lost him. I grew to like Badaya. Kind of yeah. He he was kind of annoying early on, but Badaya was uh, like when, when he came him. back. And they expected him to destroy the yeah. yeah. Attack He's like, no, He's like, I've been I good. I didn't do anything. I've I just sat good. here and I was good, man. <laughs> that must have really annoyed him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, so what do you guys think about the the binary star system and the two gates? Like, did that uh, work for you guys in terms of... It seems to me, I'll just say my opinion so that way it's other, is like the two <laughs> gates only being reason that they existed and the binary system was so that way he had some kind of way to keep a part of the world hidden from us for for these you know two series and mm -hmm. um it was it felt very like 
uh, you sneaky author using the mechanics of the world to uh, mm-hmm. to kind of hold that withhold something that is um, should have been obvious, you know, kind of thing. Well, I have a but, question. They need to only the only way they can get there, if I'm correct, is through the gate. How did no. they get the gate there? So, so they met with a senator who had the key. No, but so how did they? Build the gate there. Yeah, so it's explained. So is it? I so can't remember. That's what I. There's, there's two gates. There's the jump gates where they, you know, the alien tech. Yeah, yeah. And, stuff. and then the hibernate gates were the ones that the alliance was using prior to which you have to fly there in conventional space, mm-hmm. set up the gate, and then jump back. Took ten years. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's yeah. That's what I must have. I missed a lot because I'm working usually doing yeah, stuff. So, so I don't always. So they everything. they sent they sent. All the materials with a bunch right. of different ships ten years earlier, or like probably probably about twenty while. years ago. Yeah. yeah, and and then they built the gate on that side, and then they were able to jump back and forth. Well, I'm with you. Okay, okay, that makes sense. And then yeah. and then they put all these safeguards in place that no other communication systems or any electronical stuff, any mention of that, it, the seeing of the people. That's where they were invisible was because they were all up getting these updates that this place does not exist they changed something on the on the map so it looked different right. on the map as well didn't they they, I think they, they, they just never, they never updated displayed it. one yeah, star yeah, yeah. um in system so like if for the few people contractors that were in system on the mm-hmm. map display you didn't see the two stars so that way even if like people reported it out there or it leaked they yeah. wouldn't know to look for a two-star system yeah um and there were some some details sprinkled in there that i appreciated um because you know like uh, as a reader i always like try to see if it passes the sniff test like is, is the author just doing this because of plot and he needs to mm-hmm. or like does it make sense and um I'm trying to think i think it was the other admiral that was like explaining um just like different shipments and stuff increasingly going missing over the last yes. few years and the they logistics were, like, guy yeah and they were like just writing it off as you know syndicates or pirates and things like that um and just some of the other elements and i don't know enough about the science but i felt like jack campbell again we talked about like previous space battles with like light speed and everything like it's at least somewhat rooted in science how he makes everything work um yeah which i can appreciate so sometimes this, I feel the, like whole, the lines get blurred between the sci-fi and the, the magic system or whatnot. Sorry, Joe. I, I feel like he planned this out more. Yes, because that's the point. he he spoke earlier about unit order and uh, like you know ships disappearing. Like you know they're trying to take the auxiliaries and they knew mm-hmm. their ships being made and block and all this stuff. Um, that's the other question. Did block did die? Didn't he? He did mm-hmm. escape. He did die, did he? Yeah, I thought so. He died, yeah. I can't remember. Um, but, like, you know, the fact how they survived was behind behind the planet. When it, did they hide behind the planet? Then they got they they hid jumped. behind the sun. That's the it, star, that's it. Yeah. You know, so, like, this is stuff that's happened before. So it's not like, oh, they survived now. They've done this before. Different, ver- you know, they hid behind the planet or whatever it was last mm-hmm. time. Or the star, I can't remember. But, like, you know, it, it did. It wasn't like, oh, do sex. They survived. You know, there was stuff that's happened before that's reused, maybe done it differently, but reused. Definitely felt more planned. As well as they traveled a lot. Do you think in these five books, they went all they went through the enigmas, through to the kicks, to the dancers, back to Earth, back? There's a lot of traveling in these five books, didn't they? They did. Yeah, a whole lot more than the first one. Yeah, and you, you thought definitely... like you thought they moved a lot in the first series, and they just ran home. And this one, mm-hmm. they ran all the way the same amount of distance they ran, plus farther, and then all the way back to old Earth. Yeah, because they could use the gates and you could just travel so much more and cover the ground. You know, they did a bit of the old um, Game of Thrones season eight, you know. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) to kind of tie in what you were talking about, about using the the star for cover. um, In terms of the characterization, uh, do you guys think that that how was the effects of that on the Gary, the character, the fact that he actually really wasn't the quote-unquote hero that saved the day at the end and it was really his like mistress you know (laughs) kind of set up that then you know in her betrayal the it kind of like she was the the hero character she Mm -hmm. was the one that i i didn't read the first series but like you guys said she's the one that eluded this 
danger of this in the beginning to me she has the biggest character arc yeah she's done really well she she was definitely the one that we loved to hate um in the first series at least for me um and then she kind of grew on you and they they came back and they were friends and everything and it's it's certainly ironic that um coming from the military's perspective we all hate the politicians and pointing our fingers at them and now here we are um honoring her and going to try to make our own legend out of her sacrifice and everything um since i first read this he's now finally added a handful of more series that i'm tempted to finally pick up because i just got through the three the first three in the lost stars and it looks like they're up to four and then there's also the, the genesis fleet and then the outlands fleet um, if i remember correctly the genesis fleet is geary's grandfather yeah oh, okay um, oh like genesis as in beginnings yeah it's i think it's set near old earth okay um so i i have that first one and i remember reading the back cover and it was geary's grandfather um and then lost stars is midway star system who used to be syndics and then they broke away and they a lot they became allied with the alliance mm -hmm. um and then outlands i think is geary again i think if we go back to geary mm -hmm. i think that's new it looks like uh yeah. may 18th of this when, year um, came out yeah when his somebody, other series are pretty cool too um i know he's got one that's like um sailing like old school sailing like I, I haven't been able to check that one out yet. Um, I'm drawing a blank on the other one. It's more YA than this, but if you like uh, fantasy, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, just to touch on the last part on the, on Victoria Rionce, she actually had a quote at the end there where it was kind of like, not her final words, but near it. She was telling uh, Gary in a message the whole plan on what him to do. And she goes, save the Alliance, Admiral. As I told you the first time we met, that is what I'm willing to die for. Now, now that's my last request. I was just like, dang, that was like a mic drop moment for her. And I was like, mm -hmm. there hasn't been a whole lot of those in the series. They just, like you said, people just die. You know, like there's mm -hmm. sacrifice and there is, uh, uh, there's the threat of harm out there. But there's no like, oh, I just, you know what I mean? She she is a politician, so um, it, it, it's quite fitting that she has some nice little last stand speech. Um, you know, sorry. No, go ahead. I th I think he was going for that though. In, um, you know, when soldiers died, they just died. They didn't have that moment where they said mm. goodbye and they they had a moment because in real life that doesn't happen. You don't get a you don't get the opportunity. You yeah. Just, Hold on, let, let me slowly uh, die uh, and, and say goodbye uh, to you final know, speech. Let me just get the yeah. out. Two, two or three. Yeah, you know uh, what I mean. It's, and it's come shit back awful. to add a little bit more. So, it was it was definitely I th he he did a really good job with the series. I, I um, you know, I I found it. My neighbor was like reading book five. And my kids, you know, my inquisitive little kids are like, oh, you like to read books? My dad does a YouTube channel. So he went inside and he got book one for me. Uh, nice. you know, and, and that's, that's how cool. I got book one. And so it was like, I'm, I'm, this series has just been the gift that keeps on giving. So I'm really excited to keep going with it. So that's uh, so our, our uh, we have a couple authors here, but uh, our resident that's working on sci-fi, what did you think about the whole kind of like dangers of AI undertones in the, in the series, especially the final book here. Never trust a robot. <laughs> I, I won't even talk to Alexa. Uh, <laughs> Do not teach the AI anything. The thing is, it's not Alexa's a problem. It's the ones who programmed her. That's the issue. And that's what I think the issue with this is. It's not so much them. It's the people who programmed them and how they viewed things and what they'd done. And they weren't military people you know what i mean that it sounds like they were the you know as i said i think that was the exact words like they're like the geeks who've done it and the nerds who've done it and they you know what i mean if it's an if it's a service person who had that ability to do that sort of work they might be able to program them 
betterly betterly with their own experiences in a way maybe mm-hmm. i don't know but you know what i mean it's sort of the ai's just were given basic rules of what to do and then they start conflicting right. with each other themselves didn't they because they had two different versions of what they had to do mm-hmm. i think didn't they and then they conflicted and then caused issues and you know yeah i thought that was uh really interesting there it's a uh, um that's an, a real life uh, programming uh, uh, for the, what's it called? The AI learning, um, where basically they have them compete against each other, hmm. uh, the two programs, and and basically have one as like a constant, um, and then the other one learns um, based off of the reactions of the other one. So the one's basically like, I'm making a guess on how to improve, like this is my next step. And then the hmm. other one's like, is that is that work? And then it, will then change uh, what it's doing uh, and so th- together they end up building e- on each other um, and so th- he took it a kind of uh, kind of a slight way where basically he was like follow all of the regulations everything to a letter T of all the bureaucracy says which I don't know how those just didn't stay in port the entire time if that was <laughs> their, really their mission right because the whole point of bureaucracy is to kind of slow the processes down and then, but uh yeah and so then they had the second one there where they were going out and then they gave all of the combat side geary's tactics like old tactics mm. what would you guys take on that well the the thing that i've noticed any successful ai gets thousands upon thousands of thousands of runs to see if they were viable um i watched a youtube video one time and it was like um it let the ai play a game and it took it took the AI oh, like 347 tries, to, and it was like a simple game where you had to, you know, walk over a balance beam, do something, you know, go around, go up a ladder, over, and then ring a bell. And it took him like it took the AI tons of chances to do it. But we're just going to let the AI run its course after no testing whatsoever. We're going to give it one command and hope it does the right thing while giving it weapons that can destroy planets. Good luck. Good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and something too, that I, I watched an interview with Elon Musk and he talked about how we have no idea what we're doing with AI. We're going fast. We are pushing and trying to learn. We're and, experienced. And, you know, we've got we, no- have, we have no idea what's coming <laughs> because this is brand new. This is a new frontiers and we could accidentally create something that is just super dangerous and we have no idea what we're doing. So, you know, are, are we really looking down the line thinking um, we're definitely not trying to be safe. Um, And maybe that's what Jack Campbell was trying to go with here. Um, I read a, my, my mind goes all kinds of places. So, I want to buy a graphics card for my computer. So I was like, okay, why are graphics cards so expensive? Okay. It's because of uh, Bitcoin mining. Um, I was like, okay, so how does Bitcoin mining work? So I keep checking out these videos. And so I did a whole video on uh, smart contracts with uh, it's, it's an AI driven smart contract that Bitcoin uses through uh, blockchain technology. Um, this is like two days ago. I got into this. It was, it was, it was you went down that rabbit hole, man. You I went did. deep. I, yeah. I was three <laughs> hours into uh, how cryptocurrency works. Um, <laughs> but the, um, so they, they generate these smart contracts and they have to follow them to the letter. So once you close a smart contract, you can never change it. And I think that's kind of what we were looking at here where a, a smart contract was, was set and, once there, there was no drop off point, there was no ability to come back and re and recorrect um, because that AI technology had the ability to just say, all right. And, and we kind of saw that with the um, when they ran out of fuel, um, mm. all of a sudden when there the stop, there's a hard stop in it. And mm-hmm. uh, I think that's why um, they talked about when they were talking about the smart contracts through the um, example for Bitcoin, <laughs> they said, um, AI doesn't understand grace. AI doesn't understand like uh, empathy. And so where a cop might pull you over and say, Hey, you were doing five miles over the speed limit. Uh, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a pass this time. Yeah. AI is like, Nope, going to jail. The rules of this. You were speeding. You um, hit the parameters. 
There you yeah, go. Yeah, they, they have no no ability to no fudge room, right? They don't understand. That's it. They don't understand mm-hmm. there is such a thing like that. Yeah. It's uh the dangers of AI, it's it's really uh pan- what's the phrase? Pandora's, Pandora's box. box. Yeah. And I, I might be misremembering, but I think even Elon Musk originally didn't want to get into AIs and bots too much, but um, and a lot of else is. it's mm. an arms race, right? So if we're not doing it, somebody else is going to do it. You know, we can keep pointing the fingers, worried about what other nations, other people, other companies are going to do. Um, and in, in a way, like I think this is one of the many great things about like science fiction and literature that we can kind of foreshadow what could happen um, in our own timeline. And, you know, like I'm a huge techie, like I love tech. I love the possibilities there. There's like so much good that can come from it. Um, Even just like the ways that they're using it in the medical industry to, um, you know, get more accurate, um, diagnosis and everything just all these different data points do all this different analysis etc cetera, etc cetera. um but it's not a human right like they're able to compute and process so much more um but you know i, I think we were talking a little bit about it before um all the the time wasting on youtube and TikTok, and you know my brother and i we just have fun sending each other that keeps popping up on our for you page of um, just different AI bot technology going rogue, right? Like uh, uh, mall cop security um, starting to like attack humans or whatever, because they're damaging the property, right? Like the parameters are, you know, like, Hey, don't, don't damage the the property or whatever. So like humans get on the, uh, the enemy list. Right. And we, we see that a little bit here. Um, and yeah, I, I watched Ghost in the Shell so young. Um, have you guys seen that before? Of course. Um, yeah, cyber cyber terrorism unit, and just like you get to see like I've, all the. I've good not watched the, the live bad. action one, but I've seen the, the the good anime one. The live yes. action was okay. I didn't mind it. Yes, it, it was pretty linear to the story, give or take a bit. You know what I mean? It wasn't. There's a few scenes that like were spitting image of the first movie. Um. It, I, Back about block. Do you fi- sorry? I just remembered. Do you think he was a bit wasted? It's like oh, yeah. he come back, block or blotch or whatever his name was. You know, he's he supposed to have died in the first one. He didn't. Mm-hmm. They did sort of hint that he might not be dead, like a syndic's can of fake stuff. He found out he wasn't dead. They brought him back, and he was nobody until the end. And he was just stuck on the ship, and then he died, saying, "Oh, Michael might be alive," and then he died. Do you not kind of feel he was a bit sort of a waste? It, it, it could have been screen time. You know what I mean? It felt like when he started writing it, he was going to make him the big villain. Yeah. And then he really got caught up in what AI could be yes. and could do and made AI the villain. Because at the beginning, they were trying to take the auxiliaries away because they was making a second fleet, mm-hmm. weren't they? Because they found out through the, the money stuff trails. That they wanted to keep take the exal, ex, yeah, the ex, exal, exal, oh, I can't pronounce the word properly. The, the ships, the ones that fix everything, they wanted to take them away. Um, and all the smart people as well, weren't they, who had who could work on soup on the gates? They wanted to strip everything they could and then keep some of the fleets back. So it's, it was more like they were making a second fleet with conventional ships, and yes. Block was going to be the man per, main person in charge of that. And then it sort right. of changed completely, you know. Yeah, so so basically the government had built a backup government and military for the syndics. And I think that there's people in government that were basically doing his protection because there was uh, there's this big fear of Geary um, coming over and pulling the Julius Caesar, you know, or uh, um, Napoleon Bonaparte kind of thing. Military hero comes back and now calls himself emperor, right? And mm-hmm. the people would follow him, right? Mm-hmm. And so, so I think that's one reason why they were doing these huge investments in tech. Um, but it had started before Geary was even found, right? Mm-hmm. So there, there was already these underlines there. Um, 
so I, I took it that character as just he was representative. He was a characterization of all of the that portion of the government, because then in, in the final words, they kind of summarize that that they have all the data information to be able to go back and clean out um, the political and get whoever you know was behind all this and and then they even uh, gary put even uh jack campbell put even put in that little thing about uh not the people that just weren't just there that would be the scapegoats the ones that were behind it and i took the, i took that one little sentence as a little jab of somebody who kind of understands how power really works and mm -hmm. especially in the government and military apparatuses you know so that was my take on why anybody different do you feel they could have done more with him though? Because he was just trapped in the ship, you know. Yeah, I, uh, I think if the series, to me, the series is very, very good, and this is kind of leading to uh, closer to the end stuff. But I think the very series is very, very good for what audience it's trying to meet. Right? This is not the same audience of of like a Dune or mm. like a uh, a like we're not telling you what's really happening. It's just alluded to. So you could spend the next, you know, 20 years thinking about what did I really mean, you know, about this message. Mm -hmm. It's it's not that kind of, uh, a kind of book series. Um, and so I, that's why I don't, I don't think it was really wasted. Like it would have had to be a bigger book. He would have had to mm. do 200 more pages, you know, I think to really not just dive into his character, but then those pages would have been had to spice out over other books to kind of lead up to why the sacrifice of his is, you know, or defeat of his is important at the end and whatnot. You know what I mean? And and that's not the the format that the books kind of took. There was uh, it was excellent, excellent naval combat and all the science that goes around around all that. The introduce of of always some kind of new. Uh, what are we going up against, right? The AI was new, mm -hmm. even though it was own technology, right? Every other book had their own little species that was introduced, basically. You know, um, so, Second and then... Book two, we get three species. Right, right, right. But one was allied, so then it evens out, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> and then... Um, uh, and, and so it just doesn't really focus a whole lot on the characterization, mm -hmm. to me. And that's why I thought that the uh, characterization of, of uh, Rion was, was so incredible because really it stood out more than seems like the supporting cast had more character arcs mm -hmm. than the other ones right uh i mean even the the you alluded to earlier the logistics people the one that could scramble and and scram mm -hmm. unscramble the uh the budgeting and the paperwork and documentation oh the, the green yeah, fell in love. Love. yeah. Fell in love yeah yeah and and, and I think the reason why, though, is this is not a five book story arc. If, uh, you know, uh, Gary, Gary is James Bond. He's not allowed to have a character arc. Well, he's he has to be so the gone. same. He has to be the same person every book. Well, he's an old, old man, as in, like, you know, he, he's of a different era and he knows what to do. You know, these people are basically children in regards to how they deal with fighting regarding compared to how he was you know he knows tactics and everything so he's and he, he's not like he's a young man who's got to learn new stuff you know everyone learns stuff but like he's already reached his age learned all the naval tactics mm -hmm. he's showing them how to become better so they're all learning new stuff and everything's changing because of him right you, that's you know what i mean like you know he has a few things change he has a partner and he has conflicts and you know stuff happens but overall he's pretty flat he don't like being blackjack, he kind of, you know, oh, I am, I'm not, I am, I'm not, flips and flops, but he's quite the same all the way through, and he's a stable person like that, I find, you know. I don't mm -hmm. feel like he's going to, like, go off the deep end for some reason, where other people are, you know, they have their arcs, and they change, and they do what they do. So, then, right. so what do you guys think about Geary and Dashani's uh, relationship, then? Is she actually a Geary now? Or did she yeah, keep the second, she did keep the, she did change her second name, didn't she? She did, but she's yeah. still Captain Dis Johnny while she's on yeah. the ship. Correct. Yeah, yeah, that's just because when she's you said Anya like Geary when uh, she's off the ship. Yeah, yeah I couldn't remember. Mm. They they kept it professional until the end, right? Yeah, well, oh, all right. the crew crumbled, didn't they? They all were like, oh, <laughs> we're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to be fair, I don't blame them. You know, <laughs> I 
I didn't, I didn't, I didn't love that about the series that like she wants him on the ship so she could see him all the time, but mm -hmm. they also want to be intimate with one another where it's a situation where they literally got to be intimate for like two weeks, maybe. Yep. And yeah. then, yeah. And then all of, they're back on the ship and there's like, they were even afraid to go into each other's staterooms because they didn't want mm. somebody talking about how they may be, you know, do you just think that that was a realistic, uh, uh, like, representation of relationships in the future in space with all that time? And well, it's hard with that because it's such a unique situation. You know, he is who he is. Everyone's gunning for him, whether it's good or bad, in some way. And then she's got her own reputation, you know. And then they're high up in military and stuff. I mean, you're the military man. How would that work? I. <laughs> everybody be shagging everybody yeah that's yeah. my fault everyone just bones you know what i mean it's like ah, oh, they're you're talking again. about a whole bunch of humans know, human horny teenagers <laughs> 20 year olds we we know that they're younger because of how fast they were dying yeah and then they're promoted quickly so they don't tend to have the uh the like the responsibility and the mentorship and the you know to grow up right and mm -hmm. Their How whole old? society, Sorry. their whole society is based around ancestors, right? Which mm. should, in effect, kind of encourage the development of 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 uh, future generations, right? Yeah. Like it, right? Like if your whole religious society is is keeping track of your family, like you, sh they should all be having like seven, eight kids, is what uh. I'm saying. <laughs> well, they might be. You well, know, how old is thing? Gary? Sorry, I, I'm sure Early they have some 30s. pretty good um, contraceptive stuff uh, there in the future. You know, <laughs> yeah, no. with their their vaccines or whatever they need to serve. I feel like he's forty ish. I thought he read. Theory? I thought I read he was early thirties, like 31, 32. Oh, that and young! Johnny wow, was like twenty six. Oh, and this Johnny was a captain at twenty six. So you got to think everybody under her, you know, twenty twenty one. Oh, kids. Yeah, there was only one person, or one or two people, his senior, in their it's, in their side when he get unthawed. Yeah, yeah. To, to, he um got the guy died was, after sorry. he quote unquote died initially, yes. right? Like he wasn't even mm -hmm. a captain, quote unquote, before. Yeah, he was so. a ensign. It was like go. lieutenant something, right? Like, he was an ensign in the very beginning, yeah. right? And then he yeah. was promoted in the first series. Before he made that sacrifice a few times, mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah, because he had his own ship. So whatever that, but it was a smaller ship than cruiser was. or heavy cruiser, wasn't it? No, he, he was like think it even was smaller than that. Yeah, it was yeah. a small ship. He was captain of. Uh, Mar they are quite even. Heavy cruisers are still small in this story because battleships are huge. Oh, battleships, right, yeah. Yeah. battleships then are destroyers, are, uh, and then I mean, then um, battle cruisers. Battle cruisers are, are still huge as well, and then everything else is just tiny compared to them. Yeah. The, the cruisers yeah, are essentially cruisers. corvettes in yeah. in this world. Same as the destroyers are kind of falling the same sort. They're all very similar in this, aren't they? They're very. They're isn't, just all small. Isn't a destroyer kind of like a destroyer we have in the US? Correct. Destroyers are the big bad. Mammy Jamos with all the uh, guns destroyers on. are oh, like, but destroyers are like the medium size. They are basically disproportionately carry armaments versus yes. their size. Yeah, and a battleship is like I am big and I got big guns. Yeah, yeah. But then because of how good everything else is, battleships now are just well, they don't do them no more, do they? They stopped them a while ago. No battleships. We, we did get to see their um, relationship dynamic change. So there was at least that acknowledgement there um, in this series. Like they kept it professional, but they they did kind of flirt with the line a little mm. bit. Um, and they caught themselves slipping up and kind of like reeling it back and everything. Um, and it's clear that her crew, Dejani's crew, loves her so much that like anything that would be quote unquote taboo they kind of just look the other way for their Lord and Savior, Blackjack Geary exactly. and um, Dijani. But uh, I think it was Carlos that was kind of pointing it out. Like, uh, I think realistically, <laughs> granted, like Blackjack is supposed to be this holier than thou character that really tries to hold himself to these higher standards. 
the adrenaline rush, the near death experiences, like um, the rush of marriages towards the end there was kind of, yeah. you know, <laughs> like I, we, I, I don't see how we didn't have more of that previously, especially with the number of ships that died before blackjack took over the fleet. Right. Like regulations be darned. Um, you know, when people think that their day might be their last, um, they're going to live it up. Right. The thing is, sorry, sorry. No, go ahead, Joe. Well, the thing is, the, the difference between this, like, universe and, like, our military now, they're very, because everyone dies, this war's been going on such a long time, they're quite, um, the military is very brainwashed to, you have to, you know, we charge and die. There's no tactics, it's honor. We fight. If you don't fight, you die. You know, it's like you have to have such a high standard at such a young age, and they die so quick. And it's the honor of dying and fighting, being the first one. You know, they all want to be in the battle cruisers because they're the fastest ships to die first. You know, kind of the, the whole mentality is completely diff diff uh, different. So they have to hold this high standard. Of, like, you know, they don't. I mean, obviously, the, the, the lower um, military people do stuff, but like the higher up it goes, it's like, oh, you don't in public to a degree, but then didn't Deshaun say that Blotch tried, tried it with her, didn't he? Cause that pissed Geary off. Cause he's, you know, mm -hmm. all, you know, get you promoted a bit if you don't, a bit of the old, you know, and it, obviously she was like, oh, <laughs> how dare you? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's so, brought up. Yeah. yeah this, this is very, very allusion to it. I, you know, I think, I, I think it's just an excellent author decision. One, I yeah. think he was kind of, um, the whole like Japanese Imperial Japanese like mm. honor bound society. Yes. I think is a lot of influence the ancestors portion of it enters it. And so, um, and so that kamikaze and formal, I think that had a lot to play in it. And I think too, is like it, like once you, um, once you go down that rabbit hole, that there's a lot of pages that you kind of have to like devote to that. Once, you know, yeah. every book there's, you know, got to be some kind of relationship. And I, mm. uh, you know, again, thinking of who the audience is, uh, you know, did we want to turn this into a, have, you know, even 20 pages of romance, you know, yeah. you know, every few often. We I mean, for the a ships. little in the first series with Rion. Um, yeah, but maybe that, that, yeah, but that was a bit you. different, though, you know, that was she like was booty calls. That was, yeah. Uh, and she was getting close to him in case, you know, because she didn't know she was going to kill him or back. not. You know what I mean? There's more going on of that. Uh, and then because he liked to Sean or whatever and then she was getting angry because he's boning her and she wants it and it's ah oh, drama right. you know but it, it didn't <laughs> cling on that too much though did it you know it was no. cling on cling on it too much as, as a cling on it cling on's are in there as well different oh, universe oh, well, <laughs> giving it some... so Carl since you're the only one that has read to <laughs> this point are we hyper focused on one perspective again or you know because like every, everything we got was Blackjack's perspective mm -hmm. so if he didn't see something, we don't know what happened. Right. Um, is this next series going to be a little bit more uh, multi-perspective, or is it just um, single perspective going forward? Yeah, from what I remember, um, granted, when I read the Lost Stars series, um, it's approaching probably like seven, eight years now. Um, but yes, we get more perspectives through it. And... Um, it's not really a spoiler because it covers it in the summary, but we pretty much follow um, the CEOs there at, um, was it Midgate? Mm -hmm. Midway. Midway. And, yeah, thank you. Um, and for me, like, I'm looking forward to going back and rereading it just because, like, the syndics are uh, the big baddies, right? Like, um, evil corporations that just take advantage of everybody and so it's it's nice to see it from the other side and the perspective and really um kind of makes them human right no longer the demons that we expect from the alliance point of view and as as we got to see in this series jack campbell has clearly grown as an author and i think it, we get to see that more so in um mm -hmm. the lost star series as he bounces between the different ceo perspectives um as everything goes down so 
it's a lot of fun. I'm I'm looking forward to uh, getting back into it. I haven't started yet. Has anybody started yet? Nope. Would you guys be all right with starting at November first? That way we can get just a fresh, maybe uh, set of eyes on it, and just be like, all right. Um, if anybody wants to join, give them a, give them a little bit of time to join if they want to. And uh, heck yeah, is, is it a spot where you can join, or is it? It's I I think you could start there. Um, you do okay. miss some of it, but it's the start of a series and it's its own standalone. Yeah. Um, the timelines do start to mesh up partway through the first book. So mm -hmm. like you definitely get more by having the other series, but it's not necessary. Okay. And we still, so. still do a one book a month. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I'm, so I'm starting down November 1st and, uh, do a live stream at the end of it. Okay. And then, uh, uh, uh want to continue on and get just a couple more questions in so we could keep it condensed for everybody's things and so uh really what do you guys think of uh gary entering politics and him as leader getting to this end here it'd be interesting because he just basically like you know no you know tell the truth which politicians don't like to do do they um but would he get angry and shoot him possibly would that go down well mm -hmm. i don't know I don't know. What do you reckon? What do you mean, shoot him? Like, well, you get angry at the other politicians and shoot them. You know, because oh. he got he got real pissed, like with these guys, like breathe, okay, breathe. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there's only so much you can take of it every day. I think they I think he was so it. patriotic, though, that I don't think he would have ever got to that point. Like, yeah, he was frustrated, but um, I I don't see him ever creating a coup. Um, one of the things I liked about him as a leader was that he was willing to say, I need somebody above me so that I have somebody to answer to. He lost um, structure. Yeah. He did not yeah. want to be the top of the pyramid. He wanted mm -hmm. to be mid-level pyramid. Um, and he even wanted to give up his admiralship yeah. whenever the, whenever <clears throat> the war was over, he wants to go back to being a captain and just doing his job. Um, and I think that's the kind of person you want as a leader. Um, George Washington mm -hmm. was that way where he said, okay, I'm I'm giving up the presidency. I don't want to be in power anymore. I'm literally handing handing this back to you because my time is done. Um, and I think that's who you want as a leader. I think that's a good model. Um, people who strive for power, power. Yeah, people who strive for power usually, you know, what I mean, they want it for themselves. But people who get pushed into that position because they are good for that job, and then they walk away after is quite, you know, what I mean, that's sort of the way I look at it, really. He, yeah. he also says that, um, you know, they they constantly try to catch him talking against the, the government. And mm. he later on starts to distinguish that he will follow all, quote unquote, lawful orders. So I think him being in politics, um, he probably even realizes that it's a dangerous game because if things start to get too far um, out of line, you know, and it's no longer lawful, what would he be willing to do, right, for the alliance? Um, yeah. yeah, that was my, my thing about it. To me, I, it, I, to me, my first initial reaction was it undercut the entire point of his character in, the, in terms of the plot. Like, mm -hmm. the entire plot is gary not becoming the you know emperor leader of the thing him going into politics and a representative government is gonna end up with him as the yeah. the, the leader the president the emperor you know and i just like and then he's along the way he's just removed any um any like defenses against him taking over stuff do i think that he would do like is his intent good? Would he still want to be representative of the people? Probably. But that's not the character arc. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. he, he should have... I don't want to tell Jack Campbell how to write his book. But to me, I would think there would be a can either some kind of continuation uh, of the story type of thing. Like, he gets his people that are going to stay and go back, you know, or something like that. Or he goes and does the family life thing. And don't give him a uh, you know a career decision in the book. You know what I mean? And if you were going to end end his story, as I was just like, 
I was just so like, no, at the end there. But, you know, <coughs> there's definitely reasons why he would do it. You know, Campbell totally took care of the story in terms of saying a lot of the riffraff were cleaned out. So there's no reason for him to become, you know, the supreme leader or whatnot. But right. to me, my initial feeling was like, oh, why? Yeah. I feel like he'd do a bad job simply because that's not how he is, as well as how it's structured. There's still, like, you know, they get rid of all these riffraff, all these bad people, but there's queues of people trying to get them positions anyway. They're not just going to change. You know, the, right. you know, the underlings aren't going to become different people, as well as because he's very black and white and I must be like this is how it must be. But then the book I before... The book before he divert, he changed how he um, interpreted something to do something. One, it? it was to do with the, the refugees coming over or something. I can't know what it was, but like oh, his yeah. orders were to do this, but he went up over his orders, did different. Even though it's for the good, he didn't follow his orders. Now, if he's in charge, spirit instead of the letter. Yeah. So if, now if he's in charge, saying, "Ah, oh, no, we must do it like this," but then this situation comes up, well, do you do that? Or do you follow the T, the, you know, what you said you have to do? Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? Like, you can't be so straight-edged black and white when it comes to stuff because the world's not black and white. And then I, I think he would struggle. Blackjack. Yeah, but, yeah, but you see what I'm saying? But he would struggle, you know what I mean? If you get what I mean? Like, so it would, Yeah, you know, yeah. He's a military guy, right? That's like, it, he's you know? used to following orders. Mm. Um, and he definitely got pushed well above his previous station here. Yeah. Um, and he's more qualified because he has more experience than a lot of the other guys, right? Um, like he's granted, he didn't rise through the ranks as long, but he served longer than most of them, um, more than just his initial enlistment date, but he's a military man used to people delegating stuff to him and him getting it done. And, um, I think it was Ramsey that said earlier, like he, he wanted to have people above him so he can just follow the chain of commands um it's interesting i i feel like and maybe you guys disagree like the ending of this series was nice like it was a decent ending point but i i almost feel like we could have an additional book in this series to kind of wrap things up it's um, definitely not the high point of the series yeah first three books were uh, yeah. Just to go into what's your overall feelings of the of the the series? I think the first three books were the, the best Black, in the in the series. The Black Fleet or all of that that just seemed very boring to me compared to everything else that's happened. Like even like I, I really thought at first when they went to Earth and these other humans turned up before they turned out to be just peacocks. I thought right, there's going to be some serious problems going up here, and then they were just like nothing. And then they went back and then a bit of drama, whatever. And then I thought, oh, maybe aliens would kick off. And it's like, oh, no, it's not. It's AIs. Like, I don't know. That kind of, because you're just fighting robots, it takes away, like, are you killing them? Can you just killing machines? And it, that's mm -hmm. me personally. I don't like, yeah. Gotcha. You know book I mean? one and book four, I think, started out crazy slow. And only the endings of them made them mm. enjoyable. And then two, three, and five were pretty good. I think three, what two? I think two was the best one um, because you got you jumped in, met the kicks, then met the dancers, then came home. This is going on, weren't it? Chaos, Invincible, yeah. uh, which I thought was really cool that they named that ship Invincible. Um, you had the uh, uh, all the advanced, um, high-ranking. Um, Alliance leaders, mm -hmm. they had to deal with the dynamic drama. Of that. Yep, that one guy stepping up and uh, being a huge asset to Geary with Invincible. Um, I thought that one was the best. Um, and then the other ones are fine. Um, but overall, I definitely give it a four star for the whole series. So, you know, what I don't like that they destroyed Invincible because it's like they've got this new technology. And he's like, but we don't actually want humans to advance too much because that'll affect my stories later on. So we'll get rid of that so they stay the same technology level they are. Maybe like a few bits. I don't like that. That bugs me with films. Like, oh, we give you this, but we'll take it away because it's going to ruin my plans for later. Uh, Sorry, go on. Um, that's my thing. <laughs> I do like that they finally explained the kit ghosts and yes. why, why those worked in book five. 
Um, they're, they're in herd. They want to feel like they have people around them. It's not ghosts. It's a comfort blanket. Yeah. Um, overall, I really enjoyed the series. I definitely, I said it earlier, have seen Jack Campbell's growth in the second series. Um, his outlining seemed a lot better. I believe it was Joe that pointed mm. out, like we start to get some of those little nuggets of foreshadowing earlier on in the series this time, instead of just, um, as of the first book or first series, like, oh, hey, here's our problem maker this book, right? Um, so it was definitely a lot more polished. I enjoyed the AI concept um, in book five and definitely felt that book five was up there for me in the series. I just wish we saw more of it as well as more to do with the aliens. Um, like it's beyond the frontier. So I was kind of anticipating us being behind enemy lines with the aliens a bit more and learning more about that. But like after we ally with the dancers and they come back home with us, that's pretty much it with the rest of the species, right? Mm -hmm. Like you just yeah. kind of forget yeah. about them. Um, maybe to come back in a later series, who knows? Um, they mention about um, the enigmas and why they have it. You know, I don't know, it's free, 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 or whatever, whatever the thing is. They even mention it in one of the uh, last book or book before about that, but they don't follow up on that. Like, he's obviously saying he wants to come back to, but a lot of the alien stuff's kind of a lot happened in five or five books. A lot of ground was covered. A lot of new stuff was brought about. You got yes. answers regarding the enigmas to a degree. Mm -hmm. But then more answers were given, more questions brought up, and then two more aliens are brought up, and then Earth, and then AIs, and dealing with the Alliance still. And you know, I mean, a lot happened for five books, a lot went down, mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing. Yeah, for, for me, um, you know, coming in into the second series was like a different uh, kind of take on it. Mm. I'm just like, kind of like man how did you guys go through uh you know five books of basically gary becoming a legend you know and getting coming back out you know but uh uh because i felt a little bit spoiled exactly like there is so much new in this series overall i agree with the 4.5 um you know is really good above average definitely fun read for anybody that's into um like the sci-fi genre you know really easy to read or listen to um the again the naval if you're into like naval tactics if you like uh watching those like historical documentaries where they talk about like how the planes took which path to you know in like a dogfight, like you get that i think um done really really well in this whole series for me the only book that was a disappointment in it was uh, book four I was so happy with book three. It did not feel like a middle book at all. It was probably my, my second favorite book in the uh, series. Um, I was happy with the characterizations, uh, you know, coming out in this final book uh, in the series. And um, it didn't leave it like with a cliffhanger at all in terms of like, I feel like, oh, I need to know what happens next. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I don't have that, um, you know, the there i don't think anybody's gonna feel bad that they did this there's definitely some classic sci-fi out there that i was like mad uh you know there i hope the hope there's people don't take there's like an opportunity lost you know especially with dune uh movie coming out and so many rereads of like that and uh you know coming out so you know but definitely good 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 stuff all right. Did anybody else have any uh, anything that didn't get asked that they just wanted to make sure they got mentioned in here? Good. I'm, right. I'm looking forward to uh, The Lost Stars. I definitely um, encourage anybody watching this to pick it up, hop on Ramsey's uh, Discord and chat with us. And um, yeah, yeah, it is, it's going to be fun. Most definitely. I was like, ooh, we get to go to the corporate side of things. I was like, some like net runner action, you know. What, what would happen if Walmart and Starbucks, you know, had their own 
portion of the galaxy. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yes. I'm excited for it. Very much yeah. so. The, uh, uh, so I just wanted to, uh, to wrap up here with a, um, with if you, your guys' book recommendations on something that you guys have, uh, uh, you know, listened to or read relatively soon, not like your best book ever, your go-to recommendation, something that's like, says something about what you're into. Go for it. I got I, I gotta cheat and pull up my um my audible real quick. Uh, <laughs> just, just just to plug um some recent fun reads. So somebody right. else jump in. You got I, you got to do a read along with me, The Blood and the Stars. Come on, I know you'll be into. If you like this space battle, you'll like that. It's a bit more. Um, it's not so much. It's still long distance, but you're. It's more singly ship, so you you know you're beating the crap out of each other ship wise, and it's it's got you deal with a lot more um trying to fix the ships. Like the battles last days, but it doesn't feel like days because you, you skip because you deal with a couple characters. But like they're fixing the ships internally, and there's like the whole like there's a character called Fritz, who's like a really good mechanics, and the the main character I can't remember what character called. He's like Fritz, I need the guns now, and they're like she's like I'm working on it, I'm working on it. Come on, I need the guns, and like. Give me half an hour, and then like half an hour, it's like fine. Then you do a shot, like it's, it's really good. Please do a read long, do, read the first, listen to the we'll first take one. It and if you like it, then we'll do that. Um, another one I'm going to start doing is um, it's by Craig Allen Allenson. It's expen ex expenditary expenditory forces. I can't read that properly. I can't even see it. Um, okay, expeditionary. That's it. I just got zoomed out. Oh man, man. yes, that that is a, a fun series. Yeah, um, um, I've, I've been. I've got that one on my TBR. I'm excited for that one. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've bought that and ready to do it. I've been. I have been listening Let me know, to. Guys, I'll I'll do a read along with that one again. Yeah, um, Rick Partlow's um, Drop Troopers is really good. That's that's really good for ground fighting and dealing with stuff like that. That's a really good series. Um, I read the first Galaxy's Edge book, which that was a two part. Like half the story, you're dealing with the legions fighting, doing everything, and then the second part's with the merc like the mercenaries thing. The second part was really bad compared to the first, and I was a bit confused because I know you. I presume you read it. Yeah, copies, you read. yeah. I, I presume it makes sense later on. But when I was reading the first bit, it all happened. Then the second bit, I was like, "What the hell is going on here?" You got to get like four or five books in before book everything fours. clicks. The, the big one i know I've, i'm on the galaxy edge thing like they've got a lot of books out they're a really big series yeah, to get behind because yeah. there's a lot going on in that universe if you like sci-fi military um it's a lot of fun That's yeah the series i want to go back to because they've just dropped so many yeah new books uh <laughs> i've only got over 20 books like and those guys are yeah it, yeah. but it's um it's not falls more into the Star Wars. Yes, it's not hard. It's it's not like this. You know, you, you, it gets you know, it's fought fast pace, a bit loose on the science, but it's good. You know, they're very consistent to what I've listened to so far. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> speaking along um, AI stuff, the Expeditionary Force is yeah. a fun one to kind of um, tickle your fancy if we want to speculate more on the possibilities with ai and to kind of follow that vein a bit i think we could easily fill up another hour of book recommendations as yeah. much as uh all of us read and listen but um i'm, I'm going to go bobaverse is a fun one to pick up so yes if uh you want to kind of play with the potential of ai and like where we could go with it um that is a fun one. It, we basically follow a, I want to say he's like 32, 33 year old programmer who just sold his company, made a bunch of money, pulled a Walt Disney where he signed up to freeze his brain. And then we come to like 130 years later after, um, you know, pretty much we move into a theocracy and, um, they decided instead of like going straight AI, though they do have that, um, they pretty much 
like map people's brains and turn them into computers as AIs and make them what they call von Neumann probes, sending them out to kind of like colonize space as uh, Earth is busy destroying itself. And um, it's a lot of fun. If you are a nerd, a geek, you'll enjoy a lot of the references between Star Wars and Star Treks and um, birds aren't real and just like all, all that fun stuff. Um, and then if you guys want some lit RPG suggestions, I don't want to use up all the time, but Peter and I have been going to really town far down. Yeah. <laughs> rabbit hole on lit RPG. And just like all the potential there and talk about like AI in the future. And um, gosh, I wish I had more time for video games. Instead. I just read about people getting trapped in video games. <laughs> um, but yeah, we got a lot of good stuff and I'm actually going to be doing a stream here in about a half hour on our channel where we're covering Apocalypse Gate book two, which is kind of a similar concept to Bobiverse where essentially this guy gets replicated thrown in a game where it's kind of like a apocalypse zombie survival where the rapture comes takes all the faithful and the faithful their bodies turn into zombies that then turn around and start eating people and this uh guy pretty much has to create holdouts and entertain the masses and uh yeah a lot of fun so many good books guys um Looking forward to reading a couple of these with you. Great, great. I'm watching YouTube. Card. Okay, so I'm being attacked. Uh, <laughs> uh, stop. All right. Great. Quick recommendation: something I've read recently. Uh, 1632 is a universe that. Um, oh, it's got a doubt. Oh. <laughs> um, 1632 has multiple authors in the universe. There's 33, but... This is 1633. Um, uh, thank you very much for all your help. I appreciate it. I'm just trying to talk for just a second more. Thank you. We love like children because they act so brave because we're lost. Yeah, Once Lodge great. turns <laughs> off. Yeah, see, see, this is, I got you. I got you, buddy. Hold on. And um, also, I'm really getting back into <laughs> the Magic of Recluse series with um, written Wait. by Ellie Modisett Jr. And um, it's a fantastic series. And um, it's more fantasy, but he ties in some engineering and um, stuff into it. And I like it a bunch. Great stuff, man. And so, uh, there you go. There you go, Ramsey. There you go. Right. So, the, uh, uh, for me, um, Alter Carbon was a uh, really good read. Um, interesting. It's a murder mystery. There was a Netflix mm. adaptation of it. Um, uh, in the future, uh, you know, faster light travel still doesn't exist. So, what they'll do is they'll basically... Um, send your consciousness uh, from one body to another uh, to transport across to the, uh, you know, different planets and whatnot. And um, some wealthy person, but Jeff Bezos kind of character um, is uh, murdered, goes back into his backup body. And this mercenary is uh, uh, not mercenary, but this uh, guy is brought back out of jail, essentially um to to investigate that um, so that was really good but i would say foundry side foundry side is one of those that's classified as fantasy but a lot of people say it's sci-fi and i i say it's sci-fi as well the is probably one of the best books i've read this year i am so excited um to re get into shorefall uh book three i think comes out early next year um if you haven't read uh foundry side it takes at the surface level it's a um very like cute female young adult character who um is a thief steals some relic um that's a tool happens to be um a, um 
have a life of its own kind of a thing where uh, her having that object has now opened up a larger story of um, these warring houses, these merchant houses that control their um, their entire society, um, you know, coming after it. Um, and uh, so that's like the story on the surface level. But there's a, the thing I love about sci-fi, a lot of good sci-fi, is where they have a deeper question that doesn't go answered. And and there are so many that are brought up in this book. I'm still thinking about it. You know, you know, what does it mean to be alive? You know, what is, uh, you know, the differences between wealth and and is power are the powerful authority figures really that powerful or is it more like a shell game? You know, there's always some bigger, badder fish out there. And what does that look like on a universe scale? And that's just like so much good stuff in it. I was so hyped, you know, finishing up that one. Um, so definitely check out Foundry Side uh, by uh, Robert uh, Jackson Bennett. That is uh, mm, good stuff. It's how you know a book is good that you still keep thinking about it long afterwards. Like you, you don't get over the book hangover when you pick up another book. Like it's it's still there. Oh, yeah. one, one of the things I thought was really cool about Foundry, Foundry Stride is they made things work by writing on it. Um, oh, and the basically like if you wanted a wheel to turn, you could write on it. When I do this, this wheel will start turning and basically turn it into a vehicle. And it was kind of like um, computer language, like when you're programming uh, software. Um, I thought that was very cool. Yeah. And if, if you do like Foundry Side and you've already read it and you're like, oh, I know everything about Foundry Side. I'm a bigger fan than you. Have for years. Uh, uh, check out Andrew Rose, uh, Sufficiently Advanced Magic. Um, a very similar type of magic system uh, where it's uh, scribing um, onto, except it's the body for the most part. And um, and as the series goes on, it gets more and more delves deep into like that magic system. So always recommend uh, Mr. Rose there. Yeah, when when are we going to pick up and geek out on book two? I am down whenever, <laughs> as long as it's not next weekend. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. So, I picked up the first one, so I'll have to try to catch up to you guys. Yeah, right, we let can us wait. know we when you're ready. Wait we'll, yeah. we'll wait. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we just got to get Joe to uh, give Lit RPG a shot. Yeah, Joe, do you do any uh, anything non sci fi? I, I've bought books, but I haven't read them. Oh yeah, <laughs> I've got a load of fantasy books I want to read. I just, I've been. Well, my problem is like I, I get, I like read big long series, so I read, I read a lot of series, yeah. and then I sort of I fluctuate between a couple of series, and yeah, just not enough hours in the day. There's, there's not awesome books. No, um, that's the best part. <laughs> good good the, problem to have. Problem there's to have. always more out there. You know, so so my, my uh, problem is I've done my Audible renews every June, July, and I get twenty two tokens. Oh, I've oh, got eight you're tokens the left. Gotcha. I, uh, yeah, eight I, tokens. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm embarrassed how many how many tokens <laughs> I've picked up out of pocket getting the three for. Um, yeah, uh, and I've added some before. Eight hundred books audiobooks yeah i do um, the three for a certain amount of money yeah, yeah i do that all the time and then they get all these sales on you like i just every time one of uh these lovely gentlemen recommend a book i add it to my wish list and then audible is like hey we have a sale this week you had a sale last week it's like oh but we just want your money books. sale yeah. hey here's 12 books on your wish list that are on sale and it's like Okay, I haven't started this series, but I know I'll get to it. Five dollars—that's like half of a, a credit. Sure, yeah. Like I used to be so good about not only finishing every book I picked up, but like re-listening to it multiple times. And now, like I'm at the point where I probably have fifty audio books that I just haven't gotten to yet. Um, um, yeah, BookTube is weird me on that. <laughs> Gosh, I've got quite a few that I've bought, and I'm prepared to read them. 
I'm reading the series, so like the Blood and Stars thing. I'm up to like 11, 11 or 13. Yeah. I can't remember. And it goes up to 18. He's finished it. Or oh, he just brought it out 18. And so far, where is level 11 or 13? Like every book's been really good. Um, but like I'm, I'm doing it. And I'm like, okay, so I've got to buy, I know I've got to buy six, three more books. I think, no, five more books or whatever it is to my 18. I think, I can't remember. Um, but then I think, oh, I'll buy it. I see, see another one because recommended. So I buy it. And I think I'm going to start that. So I listen to that one. And I think, right, I'm stuck now. I've got to buy five more of these, six more of these. Do I finish this one? But then I'm really tied into this one now. And then, and then, and then a new one pops up. And then I'm like, oh, free series going. And I'm like, oh, I've got to get another Lost Fleet one as well. I've got six yeah. tokens left. I've got to try and juggle them between five Lost Fleet. There's a you could go do like a Ramsey does use the library sign up for uh, for the listens. Yeah, it's, you know, do. a good way to go. You know, and if you guys you want just hope to they have what you support want. Yeah. and adopt a booktuber, go follow these gents' channels. That <laughs> yeah. way we can <laughs> continue me. to yep. um, adopt a pick channel. up more books, <laughs> adopt yep. a booktuber, um, subscribe below. We uh, we appreciate it. Thank you all so very much. And then, uh, and so everybody that's, you know, watching now, make sure you go to Geek on My Sleeve at YouTube. Yeah. Uh, we're going to end this uh, uh, podcast and then we're going to be blessed with more book content over there through thank him you, and thank Pete. Thank you. So, thank you guys so much. Loved it. Oh, we're going. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Good night. <laughs> oh, I'm done.